Hello, I'm Gav. I'm Dan. Welcome to the first episode of Planet Slow Mo. For the next 12 weeks, we're going to be traveling around the world to all kinds of exotic locations. We've separated each episode into two parts. In part one, we'll travel somewhere we've never been before, film something pretty wicked in slow mo. And in part two, we'll take a deeper dive into the science of what we've shot and analyze our footage. For the first episode, I thought we'd go somewhere cool. I like it. I like what you've done there. Mm. Today, we're on a glacier in Iceland. Where's that? That's in Iceland. That makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So wait, if we're on a glacier, does that mean we're already moving in super slow? -mo? Yeah, this is literally the perfect place for us. Yeah. We're going to travel around Iceland and film some of its natural beauties in some lovely 4K, 1,000 frames a second slow motion. And it should look lush. Mm. Should we start with the geezer? Start with the geezer. Which way is that? Actually, I don't know. It's not really any identifiable. Should we just head in a direction and hope for the best? Yeah, let's go to the white. All right, get yeah. it. Oh, you muppet. This is the Strokur Geyser. You nailed that Icelandic. Thank you. Or if you're English, the Strokur Geyser. Or if you're American, Geyser. Is that right? Oh, right Geyser? Yeah. We're all correct. Yeah. It goes off every five to ten minutes, and then we've seen it hit 40 meters in the air. It's gone really high. Really high. Yeah. So we're going to whip out the Phantom Flex 4K, and get some lovely thousand frames a second shots of it going off. It smells a bit like eggs. Sorry, that was me, that one. Oh, was that you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right, here we are. Filming in the rain, bit of a mare. Uh, well, oh. oh. That was a good one. That was a bloody good one. <laughs> Big there. Look at that. That is massive. That's huge. It's almost coming out the side. It came out in like four different places at once there. Got some height on that one. Whoa, that was a great one. That was wicked. That was wicked. That was perfect. That particular one there. It was a really bubbly one. This might be the bubbliest one I've seen, where it sort of like slowly does it and then eventually explodes. Sometimes it just goes straight up. Should we watch that back? Yeah. All right, playing back. Oh. Okay, look at that. God. It really blew under there. It looks like a giant, it's just explosion underneath all the water and then it finally, you see where it breaks the tension of the water there? Yeah. That was cool. It's wherever the gas comes out of the bubble first. That's where it rushes out and then it immediately drains the bubble. Yeah, the bubble just gets drained. It just seems like it's completely random. Totally yeah. random. It's just based on what bubble comes up. Yeah. I want to be really tight on that bub. And that bub was good. Where does it break? Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's quite a bit of like surface tension, it seems. It really gets quite big before it explodes and then it yeah. just loses it. I feel like it'd be really good if we got like a top down, like looking. Uh, I'll stop you there. Yeah? Got it covered. All right. Been working on something. Okay. Uh, right then. Phantom with a drone. Right. So. By working on it, you mean you've tied your drone to the Phantom with string? Yeah. OK. Are you concerned with the weight of the Phantom and the fact that it's got a massive heavy lens on it? No. Ah, that'd be fine, right? Yeah. All right, let's, let's give it a go. OK, here we go. This uh. is typically a no drone area, but we have got special permission. Stand back. Come on, come on! Come on! Dan. Yes. Dan, I'll stop you there. I'll stop you there. I've got something different in mind. All right. Why don't you look up? Well, hello. Hello. 
This is the biggest drone I've ever seen. Do you want to tell us about it? <laughs> it is uh, probably one of the largest commercial drones in the world for aerial photography. Of all the Phantoms we've ever used, this is the biggest one. <laughs> the biggest Phantom? Yeah. We've also got a bunch of other stuff that's not supposed to be on there. Yeah. yeah. The household router there that we're... Yeah. We can't trail a long BNC cable from a drone. So we have a Wi-Fi router, and then I'm using an app on my phone <laughs> to trigger the camera. We also have full lens control, so that's nice. The batteries are powering the drone, the router, the camera, and everything, so we haven't got much flight time. What's our flight time today, do you think, off, off one set of batteries? Around eight minutes. So I would say it's jerry-rigged completely. You yeah. can't trigger it normally. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty much not ideal conditions in any way. Well, and we're flying it right over a giant water spout. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's a water hazard as yeah. well. All right, I say uh, we get it up in the air. Yeah. Let's do it. Right. There's a lot of money in the air right now. It really is. Is that the riskiest position your Phantom's ever been in? Probably. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Sweet. Bring it back in. <laughs> Change batteries. I like his jacket. Drone pilot, do not interrupt. I want one of those just for everyday life. Oh, yeah, there is. Nice. You can see more of the bubbles coming Yeah, you up. can see down the spout hole. Yeah. Do you think we should get one where there's slightly less of this foreground, a bit more headroom? If we shoot more this way, yeah. we'll have more mountain to... That's a good so point. ...before it hits the sky. I like it. <laughs> Maybe further back, just a touch. Oh, that's great. That's really good. Oh, yeah. Oh. Got it. Let's play from here. It was, like, beefy rather than high. That's true. Oh. Yeah. It came out like sideways. You it see? did, yeah. It didn't go straight up, it kind of oh. beefy and came out sideways. That's a fat height. Like a double one, wasn't it? Yeah. It makes a difference being up this high because we've got the backdrop of the trees, which is easier to see the, the spray. Than yeah, that's the something sky. we couldn't get from ground level, is that because the sky is so white, there was no difference in contrast. But that is lovely. That's a real Great. good visual of how high it goes. The fact that it cleared the mountains from that point of view. Yeah. You know what I think we should do? Like, look right down the hole. Yeah, you know, I don't think... <laughs> no one has ever seen that before. When would that have happened before? With in slow... Like, that would never be... I don't know. That'd be cool. Has it happened before? Might have. Oh, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> I think we should... Yeah, I think we should look right down the blowhole. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nervous for his drone and the camera. Should we go higher? Because it's... That's, uh, no, not that's really... good. Yeah, but I'm saying that, like... It might get hit, right? This shot should be money. Do you reckon you go a bit higher? That's pretty low, or...? Oh! Jesus Christ! Holy crap! <laughs> oh, my God. It took an absolute wash in. All right, hold on. We put the camera in some uh, risky positions before. Above a boiling hot geezer is probably one of the riskier places it's ever been. Uh. Is it playing on there? Oh, you can see it coming from so far down. How deep do you think that is? I think it's at least 40 metres deep, which is pretty deep. It's like the Earth's <laughs> sneeze. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's the start of it. It absolutely soaked the camera. Water that went all up it, and then I was like, get it out of there, and then it all came back down. I was like, just get it again. Oh, it's intense. It's just complete whiteout. You can see the individual drops there still. And they're straight in the mouth of the camera. The camera doesn't know what it's seeing right now. Well, I feel very lucky that we've, uh, we've got all these shots and we haven't binned the camera or the drone. Well. So, well, we got <laughs> well, it wet. Yeah, well, yeah, we completely wear. soaked it, but yeah. But why don't we uh, why don't we move to a different location? Okay. Sound good? Yep. Well look at this, here we are at a lovely new location. That's right, we're at the Gunfoss Gun What's that? 
What's this? What's this waterfall called? Gullfoss. Gull. Gullfoss. Gull. Gullfoss. All right. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you. Good. Good. What he said, waterfall. <laughs> okay. What he said, waterfall. And we're going to put the camera back on the drone. Get some lovely slow mo shots of the water. Yeah. We know him, don't worry. Come about. on. <laughs> <laughs> The sun is setting on another lovely day of slow-mo. That was actually an interesting one because even though it didn't require anything from us subject-wise, we decided to film it in the most difficult way possible. <laughs> yeah, let's just put the phantom in the sky and film it from there. Yeah. And it may have got a little bit wet, but thankfully we still got a phantom and a lovely drone. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Feel free to subscribe to the slow-mo guys and check out part two and other episodes of Planet Slow-Mo. Thank you very much for watching. Bloody love Iceland, it's gorgeous. Yeah, so nice. Could stay here an extra day. <laughs>